Taylor, the Disability Rights Program Manager here at the Equal Rights Center. In this video, we'll be discussing discrimination against people with disabilities who use service or other assistance animals. From guide dogs that help blind individuals navigate their surroundings, to cats that provide emotional support to people suffering from depression, there are numerous types of assistance animals available to people with disabilities. However, federal laws governing the right to be accompanied by these animals in various settings can be confusing. I hope to help set the record straight regarding what rights people with disabilities have under federal civil rights laws. The Americans with Disabilities Act applies to government services and privately owned places that are open to the public. People with all types of disabilities, including physical, sensory, psychiatric, intellectual, or other mental disabilities may have a service animal. Under the federal civil rights laws dealing with housing, an assistive animal may be permitted even if it does not meet the definition of a service animal. The Fair Housing Act applies to housing related transactions, including renting an apartment, and provides civil rights protections to people with disabilities to ensure equal housing opportunities. Under the Fair Housing Act, housing providers must allow residents to have assistive animals as an accommodation if the individual using the assistive animal has a recognized disability under the law and the animal serves to ameliorate at least one of the conditions of the recognized disability. An assistive animal may be a cat that has been trained to perform tasks or another animal that provides assistance but is not formally trained. It may also be an emotional support animal. Even though none of these animals meet the definition of a service animal, they are assistive animals and thus should be accommodated in housing. Although these laws can be confusing, in a way they make sense. It is understood that the accommodation someone should have in the privacy of their home should be more expansive than the protections that apply to all public places. It is also important to note that every state and some counties have their own equal access and fair housing laws which may provide further protections to people with disabilities who live in that particular jurisdiction. Whether you work with the ERC or file a complaint on your own, knowing how to be an effective advocate can help you reach a good resolution. Here are four advocacy tips that can help you address discrimination. One, understand and advocate for your legal rights. The more you know about your rights and responsibilities as a person with a disability, the more easily you can identify the laws that apply and use those laws as tools to resolve an issue. Two, take notes and keep all documentation. In order to assist in remedying the discrimination, you may want to make a written description of the events that took place and retain copies of any policies or communications from the public place or housing provider. Three, be persistent. If a public place or housing provider states that you cannot be accommodated because they have a no pets policy, politely explain the need for your service or assistive animal. However, remember, you are never required to divulge details about your disability. Four, know when it is time to get outside assistance. If you cannot reach a satisfactory resolution, call the ERC and we will listen and advise you on possible next steps. If you have any questions regarding service or assistive animals, or believe you have experienced discrimination in a public place or by a housing provider, contact the Equal Rights Center and we can provide information and assistance on how to file a complaint. To contact us, you may fill out the ERC complaint form on our website at www.equalrightscenter.org-complaint. Or, you can also call us for assistance at 202 234-3062.